Guten Morgen, meine liebe Herren und Damen. Und das Wort dieses Tag ist Nostalgie. Und、um, hier habe ich. Okay. And that's all I come out master before I completely fall apart. Obviously, I'm not going to be speaking German this whole video, and、I、apologize to any actual native German speakers if I butchered their language. I've only, only I've only taken、uh, German for four years in undergrad, and I haven't really spoken it for a long time. But I wasn't really I wasn't joking when I'm talking about that. The word of the day is nostalgie, and Ostalgie is a conjugation or portmanteau of two German words: ost, meaning east, and nostalgie. And you could probably guess it means nostalgia, which is nostalgia for the east. After the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, specifically November 9th, which is called the Schicksalstag, the day of fate for Germans. Oh, by the way, I'm going to look at a card, but. So、there's gonna be a lot of history in here because that's what I do. I'm a German. I'm a history of a. I'm a history student of German history, and it's what I enjoy talking about. After the wall fell and East and West Germany were united in 18 no 1990, there were a lot of East Germans who were very very nostalgic of what the East used to be and how different everything changed. When I was in undergrad, when I first heard of this phenomenon, my Got reaction was like okay, so it's、um, East Germans knew their life was bad, pretty bad, and after, a, but still they still have a sense of nostalgia for their past as well as their childhoods. Obviously, when everything changed,、um, they had this kind of nostalgia, even though the past was pretty bad. But after learning, and especially now I'm in grad school learning history, it's it's not exactly like that. For instance, another great, great German word is called the Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Uh, the working through history, or the、uh, another word is Vergangenen Heights Alpha Beiton, working through history. Both of the idea basically means how are we as Germans supposed to deal with our Nazi past? And I, for last week, I just read a book by Susan Nyman called Learning from the Germans. It compares the history between、uh, Americans, especially Southern white Americans, dealing with the past of slavery as well as、um, Reconstruction. Compared to how the Germans dealt with their history of Nazism, World War II, as well as obviously the Holocaust, and in there she talked, she spent some time talking about her experience in East and West Berlin during the 80s and how differently East and West Germany dealt with their past. And in my opinion, that's one、uh, of a few things that East Germany definitely did better than West Germany. They dealt with their Nazi past much, much better. Obviously, it's not perfect. A lot of East Germans just thought, "Oh, okay, we're on the good side."、Um, a lot of East Germans erroneously thought their fathers or grandfathers fought in the Soviet army against Nazis, where obviously it's usually not the case. But East Germans generally thought about、uh, May eighth, nineteen forty-five, as a day of liberation. They genuinely sided with the Soviets and the Allies during World War Two, and understood in- internally that. Nazis, the Germans in World War II were "quote unquote" the bad guys, and obviously you can be cynical about it and say obviously the Soviets forced them to. But from many studies, including、um, Susan Nyman herself, people that actually lived in East and West Germany, including one ambassador, a West German ambassador, or technically not called ambassador because that would mean that West Germany would be recognizing East Germany as an independent country, but basically the.、Um, West German representative in East Germany actually also thought that the East Germans dealt with the Nazi past a lot better than actually believed it. It's not something that they go to school and say, "Oh, we were bad," and then go back home and just、uh, shrug and forget about it. No, they they genuinely believe that. But obviously, East German history was not great either. But just, I thought it was really interesting the first time I realized, oh, there were a lot of stuff that East Germany did better than West Germany. This is obviously not a An excuse for the Berlin Wall, but it's just interesting, right? Food, food for thought. Well, in in contrast, in West Germany, people just generally thought about 1945 as almost a national shame. It's not stated, and definitely not in public. The government under、uh, Adenauer and afterwards definitely did, would never dare to say that. But in the household, in the private sphere, when you're talking to people, you just don't talk about Nazism. It's oh, it's Hitler and a couple of other guys. 
uh, Goering, Speer, Goebbels, and all that. And it has nothing to do with Germans. For instance, Adenauer made the uh, speech that terrible, terrible things were done in the name of the German people. My professor abhors passive voice, and this is one of the reasons, were done in the name of the German people. So it's not the German people that did it. Obviously, it was. Um, and in general, the Holocaust was just something that didn't get talked about, and anti-Semitism was definitely still pretty bad after, um, still pretty bad in West Germany. Obviously, under Stalin, East Germany and the Soviet sphere also experienced a wave of anti-Semitism after the Solansky trial, but it died down pretty quickly after that, and I've read accounts from Jews and Turks and I think Algerians, they genuinely um, felt much safer in East Germany, again, just food for thought. But when we're talking about, going back to the beginning of the video, talking about Ostalgi, nostalgia for East Germany, one of the things that got brought up pretty often is the Trabant. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I'm not great with German names. I'm never sure what, um, how that's supposed to sound. But this is a uh, Trabant, I think 601, is that right? Um, Trabant, what does it say? Yeah, 601 from Welly. And I, I really love this color, and this is the uh, kind of uh, the Lada, you can say, of East Germany. I think it's interesting, we don't really get a lot of cars from the Eastern Bloc. We don't see um, Eastern Bloc, or like, I guess the Second War, or the Second World, using uh, Cold War terms. Uh, Soviet slash Russian cars, Eastern European, not really, East Germany, Chinese. Um, you don't get a lot of cars from that. I think it's interesting. I, I would love to have more cars of this kind of origins. And you can see, obviously, the Trabant is a lot bigger than the other cars. It should be roughly, it should be a, somewhat smaller. This is a 160, I'm fairly sure. According to the, some of the research I've done prior, this is a 160 scale from Welly. But um, I think it's very nicely detailed. It is kind of a basic car using like Hot Wheels terminology. It's got a die cast metal body. It's got a plastic base and plastic wheels. But just look at how detailed the wheels are. Um, I think it looks much better than a lot of Hot Wheels wheels. I got this second hand. It's got some kind of problem. This a little um, paint chip right here. But I think overall it is very well made. You can see um, the front got the front light temple, got the turbine logo. And you also get backlights. You see uh, the red, it's got a little paint chip. I'll probably detail that in with a marker or something. It also has some writing. Uh, it says um, Trabant uh, something, something, something. I can't really, sh I can't be really sure what that is. Maybe a uh, magnifying glass will help. And on the underside, there is. Um, there's some details, which is really nice. It says Welly. Um, has a number made in China, Trabant 601. And wait, this is 601? Yeah, it's 601. I'm just second guessing myself. And it's also got a hole in there, so I presumably um, this comes with or can be used with a, a display stand, which is kind of unfortunate. I wish it doesn't have that, but it's. I think this model is pretty cool, and as a history student, a history student of German history, modern, by that I mean like 20, 20, 20th and 19th century Germany, his, German history, I think this is a very cool car to add to my collection. Um, I want to thank uh, the worst channel on, the worst YouTube channel ever, I can't, I'm sorry bro, I can never remember your YouTube name, but I actually talked to him on Reddit and he recommended where to find these and some of the specifications. So he was super nice and super helpful. So I definitely many thanks to him for uh, helping me out. And I think the Turbant is a very, very cool addition to my collection. So thank you for watching.